uh, these wonderful peoples uh, to this wonderful uh, stage uh, where we can share uh, the the great deeds which the great Bengalis have done in this society. So one of the the greatest name which come to our mind when we talk about Bengalis, it is uh, in in the field of science. It is Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose or Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose, what we call him, what we know him. So I am actually basically no one to tell uh, what he did for this society. Uh, basically. Just a quote from his words that he always wanted, he always denied that uh, nothing should be uh, this uh, patented. He was very uh, against of this patenting thing. Uh, that he wanted that science should be free to everyone. So with this uh, note, I would like to take up Mr. Gautam Basu or Dr. Gautam Basu. He is a former professor of biophysics in Bose Institute. So, uh, sir, please take the microphone and start with our today's webinar. Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. We don't have much time. It's a one-hour slot, and I will try to say a little bit about Jagadish Chandra Bose. I'm going to use a, a PowerPoint, and I'm going to turn off my uh, video, and I'm going to turn on the PowerPoint. And I'll try to tell you about Jagadish Chandra Bose, not just as a pioneer in road radio, but as someone who took a different path. It does not matter whether he finally succeeded in reaching his goal or not, but there is something extraordinary when you do not follow the normal path. And that's what he did. He took a path that very few have taken. And that is why we should remember him. I'm going to share my PowerPoint. And just let me know uh, if you can uh, see it. Uh, just one second. I just want to hear from someone that, yes, I can see my, uh, my screen. Can yes, sir. You are absolutely fine, sir. OK. So I'm going to give a short talk, uh, 15, 20 minutes. Stop me anytime if you want to, uh, because you cannot really talk about Jagadish Bose in 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So I would, I would name the, uh, my talk as Road Not Taken. It does not matter whether he reached his destination or not. But he did, a, did take a road that no one took before. And that is why we should remember him, including his work on uh, wireless transmission. So when we talk about Jagadish Chandra Bose, if I ask someone on the road, who is Jagadish Chandra Bose, uh, you will often hear, yes, of course, uh, he did this, he did that. You know, he did wireless trans transmission, he worked on plants. But if you go back and look at a biography written on him, when he was alive, he died in 1937. In 1920, Patrick Geddes wrote a biography of him. It's called the, An Indian Pioneer in Science, The Life and Works of Jagadish Chandra Bose. And in that book, Patrick Geddes, in the introduction, he writes, I am asked whether the title of this book means especially a pioneer in science who happens to be an Indian or a pioneer of science in and for India. The answer is both. So Jagadish Chandra Bose was a pioneer. He was an Indian pioneer. He's a science pioneer. He was a pioneer per se. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about Jagadish. And to understand an adult, it is extremely important that we try to understand the parents. So where was Jagadish born? Jagadish was born in an India when the India was undivided. He was part of Bengal. There was no difference between Bangladesh and West Bengal. He was born in a place called small village called Radikhal, which is in present-day Bangladesh. His father, Bhagavan Chandra Bose, he studied in Dhaka University, started his career as a school teacher and joined government service. He became a deputy magistrate. When his father, in 1858, was uh, a deputy magistrate in Furitpur, sorry, what happened? Uh, Jagadish was born, okay? Uh, that is 1858. He would have been 163 years old today. His father then moved to Bordhuman in current day West Bengal in 1869. I'm just showing you how his father moved because Jagadish's life is also related to this. Okay. 
In 1875, Bhagwan became the executive officer of Katwa Division in close to uh, Chadha Krishnanagar. So this is a picture of Bhagwan Chandra Bose. He was an administrator. He was an educationist. He was a social reformer, patriot, tea gardener. He and some of his friends bought a tea garden, trying to make money and help India's struggle for freedom. But of course, uh, uh, <laughs> it flopped. He was a Swadeshi entrepreneur. He was a Brahmo, and he spent time with his son, and that is very important. Jagadish's mother, Bama Sundari Devi, was a devout, uh, you know, worshipper of Kali, and he was. She was not a Brahmo, but it doesn't matter. It's the influence of both the father and the mother that uh, was on Jagadish. So, if you want to understand how Jagadish grew up, you have to look at his first ten years in Furidpur. When his father was deputy magistrate, his father set up a school in Bengali language, vernacular school. A deputy magistrate's son normally goes to the English medium school, but his father said, "No way! My son is going to go to a Bengali medium school that I have established." So, in the words of Jagadish Chandra Bose, this is what Jagadish wrote: "At that time, sending children to school, English schools, was an aristocratic status symbol." in the vernacular school to which i was sent the son of the muslim attendant of my father sat on my right side and the son of a fisherman sat on my left they were my playmates i listened spellbound to their stories of birds animals and aquatic creatures perhaps these stories created in my mind a keen interest in investigating the working of nature i never realized that there existed a problem common to the two communities hindus and muslims what is important is as a child he played in nature he played with children irrespective of their class and caste and that ultimately i think inspired him to be a very curious boy and curiosity is a fundamental thing for becoming a good scientist you don't have to stand first in class you don't have to pass examinations you know rubindranath tagore never went to school and jagadish also was not great in studies but ultimately we have to learn that the curiosity in the child so his childhood was with jatra traditional theater he had his own pony that he played with he worked with carpenters and blacksmith he used fish catch fish in fish traps with his friends he played with insects animals his father uh, uh, got a, 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 a ex dacoit to help jagadish so he heard stories from him he heard stories of mahabharat and ramayan from his mother and korno a character in mahabharat who did not get the credit he really deserved somehow uh, he always had a soft corner for this character this is how he grew up then he moved to kolkata so he did he was not a kolkata boy he is a boy from a village he moved to kolkata in 1869 when his father moved to bardhaman he was 10 years old Jagadish came to hair school to study but his english accent was not good he could not speak english very well and he was harassed so he had to be taken out from that school and then it was very difficult because he came from bengali language school he moved to saint xavier school he continued his studies at saint xavier school he stayed it stayed in a small uh uh you know uh, which is uh, a family there was a uh, in mirzapur street in north kolkata uh, and uh, there also he studied his so in sendevias college if you are doing talking about physics we have to remember this man father lafon father lafon was a belgian jesuit priest with a gift in popularizing scientific knowledge it doesn't matter he built telescopes even today if you go to uh, sendevias college there is a observatory on the top uh, uh, credited to father lafon so father lafon i would say fell under the influence sorry bose jagadish chandra fell under the influence of father lafon which turned him into a physics this is the first time he gets exposed to formal physics remember he is actually a naturalist he is interested in nature but father lafon really introduced him and inspired him to do physics and dm bose jagadish's uh, nephew who also is a very remarkable scientist and he was the director of bose institute he wrote that bose was not particularly brilliant in his studies 
he was interested in too many other things to find time for studies. So I think if we, we want to generate more creative scientists, we have to de-emphasize de -emphasize doing well in our exams. But unfortunately, our society is so exam-based that we have killed creativity at the bud. And I hope one day we will realize this. But anyway, after completing his BA degree, Jagadish wanted to study in England and become an ICS, like today, what is IAS? But his father was against it. His father wanted him to study medicine. And so he went to England to study medicine, but his health did not permit. He, I think, before a year went to Assam for a hunting trip with his friends from St. Xavier's and he got Kalazar, for which medicine was not there. He was getting fever. It was not possible for him to really continue medicine. And then he went and did natural science. So I would call Jagadish Chandra Bose the accidental physicist. He was not meant to do physics. He was supposed to do uh, medicine, okay? In England, he went to Christ College. There he enrolled himself in natural sciences. He studied physics, he studied botany, he studied physiology. Unfortunately, today, if you take physics honors, you don't study botany. Uh, so these, this flexibility in education is also something I think at some point we have to learn if we have to nurture creativity. There, his teacher was L Lord Raleigh. If you are in physics, you know he was an, he's an incredible person. His biology teacher was Sidney Vines. The same college, Charles Darwin studied. And there's a plaque of Charles Darwin at the entrance of the college. And you'll be happy to know that in 2009, 150th birth anniversary of J.C. Bose, uh, his college, Christ College, wanted Bose Institute to send a bust of J.C. Bose. And that bust of J.C. Bose that you see uh, on the slide was set up there in 2009. And that is a great honor. He returned to India, Presidency College. This is a very old picture of Presidency College. You can see Presidency College, Calcutta University, Hare School. Uh, and uh, in 1885, but he was appointed a professor of physics, but he only got two thirds the salary of a white professor. He protested. His protest was non-violent. He said, I'm going to work, but I'm not going to take salary. Remember, Mahatma Gandhi from South Africa came to India in 1915. So I would say Jagadish Chondo was the first to do Satyagraha, which is I'll work in a non-violent fashion. I will not take my salary. That is my protest. And you'll be happy to know that after a few years, uh, this discrepancy was resolved and Indians and, West and white men got same, same salary. He got married in 1887 to Abula Dash. Abula was no, no, no um, uh, you know, standard woman. She was one of the early feminists in India a social worker well known for her efforts in the field of women's education and her contribution towards the elevation of widows. She was also continuously supported the scientific work of her husband. You, he got, now Jagadish got married, but he did not take salary. <coughs> he had no money. So he started living in Chandonagar, which is much, much north from Kolkata. From Chandonagar, he would say, he would row a boat. Sometimes Obola will help her row a boat, come to Noihati on the other side. From Noihati, they would take a train to Shialda Station, and from the Shialda Station, he would walk to Presidency College. That is how uh, uh, Jagadish, we never think of Jagadish on the bus like this. But this is something he did during the time when he was not getting salary. He just got married, and he would refuse to borrow money from anyone, including from his in-laws. Anyway, the 1894 was a turning point, start of research career. Let's not get into details here, because I have very little time. But in 1894, he, uh, until 1894, he mostly taught. But then uh, he actually worked with Edison's phonogram, discovery of X-ray. He did some X-ray plates in India for the first time with the help of uh, Neil Ratan Sharkar, the doctor friend. And in 1894, he decided to dedicate his life in research. He was 37 years old. To understand his research, first phase was about five years, 1894 to 1899. And it was production of millimeter waves and verification of quasi-optical properties. And it is this where he did for first wireless communication. To understand his work, we have to remember James Clark Maxwell, who first showed that light, visible or invisible, is an electromagnetic wave. We have to think of this man called Henrik Hertz, 
who died very young, 40 years old, he showed that invisible light, he generated invisible light, but long wavelength, 900,000 centimeter, but could not perform experiments because the wavelength was too long. So there was a race of producing short wavelength, uh, uh, you know, uh, light, so that you can do experiment, invisible light, millimeter wave. There were Russians, there was a Russian a man was doing, there were a lot of people working on it, and, but Jagadish Bush was the first five millimeter wave, you see some of his devices shown at the bottom. And he published the first paper in 1896 in Asiatic Society uh, uh, Journal. And some of the uh, mis uh, his instruments, you have to come to Bose Institute or some other place. But to, be, to give you an overview, this is the waveguide, uh, which uh, was very unique. Inside, it has the microwave generator with a, with a spark uh, mechanism. Uh, uh, on the other side, you have the detector. He worked with many different kinds of detectors, but this spiral spring receiver coherer was something very special. In front of it was a horn antenna. And all of these are now very unique and in either in their original form or slightly changed form, you're used in microwave technology. For example, he used an attenuator to control the intensity of his microwave. And today, four of the eight double prism attenuators used to control local oscillator injection in this 12 meter telescope at Keith Park is exactly what he did. <coughs> the principle was very simple. He was, here is his attenuator, two prisms. When the prisms are little separate from each other, some light will go through straight, some will uh, have total internal reflection. When you touch the prisms, the entire light goes through it. When you separate the two prisms, entire light goes uh, to, uh, gets reflected by its total internal reflection. He used incredibly novel uh, ideas. For example, this is a jute, twisted jute uh, as a polarizer for generating circularly uh, polarized uh, microwave. He used Bradshaw for diffraction grating. It goes on and on and on. So he was very innovative in, in generating his devices. But most, in, and then this is artificial eye called tejometer. When he did uh, patent this, he did not want to patent it, but Sister Nivedita and Sarah Bull, two of his uh, Western admirers, forced him to patent this. In fact, this was patented in the US. Uh, this is actually one of the father of modern day selenium based photovoltaic cell or jar. So, in some ways, you know, semiconductor. You, you can also consider him to be one of the early workers on semiconductor although he probably did not understand what he was doing because he was ahead of his own times in some ways. The first wireless transmission in the world happened in uh, Presidency College, 1894. Jagadish Chandra transmitted radio waves in presence of Father Lafon. Profullo Chandra was there and Professor Pedler, chemistry department uh, uh, head, was also there. 1895, the next year, he gave a public demonstration in the town hall. And that was something that the world could not ignore. He was invited, 1897, uh, he demonstrated his device at the Royal Institute in London. Here you can see a picture. Uh, the picture is James Dewar, a eminent scientist. And so if you ever come to Bose Institute, you see that there is a hall that he built. It was just like the Royal Institute. Uh, Jagadish Chandra, uh, when we talk about Jagadish Chandra, we cannot ignore Sister Nivedita. You, in this picture, you see uh, Vivekananda, you see Sister Nivedita, and uh, I don't want to go into the details, but there is another woman called Sara Bull, who also supported uh, Jagadish Chandra a lot. In fact, money came from Sara Bull to buy land on which uh, uh, today Bose Institute's the first building was set up. Sara Bull's money also went to uh, Belur Mott. But anyway, I just want to share a, a letter uh, Sister Nivedita died in 1911. And in 1911, on his birthday, Jagadish Chandra is writing a letter to another friend called Josephine MacLeod. And this is what he writes. Today is my birthday. This day, 17 years ago, I resolved to put all my strength for science. Five years, I worked all by myself, struggling hard. And when my strength was nearly gone, then she came to help me. Rabindranath Tagore, another incredible person who was Jagadish's friend and lifelong inspirer. In 1897, when 
Jagadish returned from uh, England after becoming famous, Rabindranath went to meet him. They did not, he did not know of Jagadish. Here's a picture of Rabindranath and Jagadish after Rabindranath got his Nobel Prize. And I'll write, read a small poem written by Rabindranath for Jagadish. Biggan Lokhi Priyo Pushchim Mondire Dur Shintu Tire He Bondhu Giechu Tumi Joy Manlo Khani Sheta Hote Ani Dino Hina Jononi Lord Jonoto Shire Poriya Poraya Chudire. I'm going to pass. Uh, this is the time when Bose changed his field of research. He moved away from physics. What he did was this two three years called can be called as a Bosenian thesis. He was working with coherers, detectors. And that naturally led to the discovery of similarity in response between living and non-living. He came up with his own ideas that there is no discontinuity between the living and the non-living. This is not completely true. There is a fallacy in this, but it does not matter. He was doing something new. See, it became very controversial. He moved on to his third phase. That was 1903 to 1933, plant physiology. I don't want to spend any time on this. I just want to say that he worked on plant electrophysiology, photosynthesis, ascent of sap, tropic movement of plants. He made incredible machines, um, instruments for measuring very fine uh, uh, response of plants. He became the first father, he became the first biophysicist in the world. Nobody has ever done biology from a viewpoint of physics. Here is a letter he writes to Patrick Geddes in 1917. I'll read to you. Dear Geddes, as I do not belong to any special fold, the physicists think that I have given up physics and gone over to the botanists. The vegetists think that I am a physiologist and so on. The Royal Society has, however, been very kind in publishing my papers. I, however, caused them some embarrassment when I sent too many. And so some of my papers remain unpublished. So what he's writing to his friend is, Nobody is understanding him because everybody is a purist. Everybody says, are you a Muslim? Are you a Hindu? Like, you know, we have to tick marks in our forms. But you cannot say, I'm not Hindu, I'm not Muslim, I'm both. And that is exactly what he did. And that is how science goes. Birth of Bose Institute. He always thought of setting up a place where Indians can do science. For Indians, by Indians, of Indians. In 1915, he retired from Bose Institute. He was 58 years old. I just retired. I am 60. I don't know what I'm going to do. But what he said is, I'm going to start a new institute. He went out. He got money. He whatever. I, it's a it's a very complex story how Bose Institute was started. And in 1917, on this day, on his 59th birthday, he dedicated Bose Institute, and it is still there. Today I was there. It is incredible. Uh, I just want to. Uh, quickly say about when you talk about contribution to the development of radio and if radio wave is really you know a uh, frequency between 30 hertz and 300 gigahertz i would say read this paper called uh, the italian navy coherer scandal revisited by probir bondopadhyay i am not going to go into the details but this is a paper in the proceedings of ieee in 1998 Details are given. It is available. The paper is available. The PDF copy in the uh, on the internet. If you still don't get it, write me a note. I will email. I'll send it to you. The, the same IEEE. Uh, there was another paper published by uh, Daryl Emerson. Very nicely written. Very authoritative. It's called the work of Jagadish Chandra Bose, 100 years of millimeter wave research. I think these two papers are very important. The first paper talks about how Marconi had used Jagadish's uh, detector. Uh, I don't want to go into the, uh, uh, you know, I would don't want to take sides at this point, but if you're interested, go and read it. I'm going to close soon because I don't have time. At the end, Jagadish Chandra Bose can only be understood as a pioneer of science, not just a pioneer in physics or radio technology or plant physiology. He was a philosopher. He was a dreamer. He was a spiritual man. He was a man with a very strong sense of beauty and aesthetics. He was a nationalist, but not a narrow-minded nationalist. He was the first writer of science fiction in Bangla. He wrote a Bengali story called Palatok Tufan. He was a person who could sustain a child's curiosity throughout his life and be creative and innovative. If you ask, but he did not get the Nobel Prize, many people ask me, 
I say he did not win the Nobel Prize. So what? If you look at the dark side of the moon, you cannot because dark side of the moon is invisible to us from here. There's a crater named after Bose. It's called the Bose Crater. And the naming was done for his pioneering work in microwave technology. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for giving us your valuable time and a wonderful, uh, wonderful note on Sir J.C. Bose, Acharya J.C. Bose. We, I believe we are many, would have, many of us would have not known this uh, until today. Thank you very much for giving us your valuable time. So uh, we'll take up our next speaker, uh, Dr. Abhijit Kar. Uh, he's uh, uh, he's a scientific officer from Jagdish Bose National Scientific Science uh, Talent Search. Sir, please uh, start with your um, uh, with your session, uh, Dr. Abhijit Kar. Yes, thank you very much. Am I audible to you all? Yes, sir. Absolutely fine. Okay. So uh, I was uh, uh, actually uh, listening to uh, uh, Professor Basu. Uh, good evening, Professor Basu. Hi, uh, hi, I have seen you after a long time. Good evening. From yes, call me Gautam. Don't say good. Oh, sure. yes. <laughs> so I haven't seen you on physical mode as we all are... Um, especially forced to stay invite me home and, yeah and do things uh, in online mode so uh, thank you we are we are eagerly waiting to see you again thank so you. many of you maybe uh, i have not much many things to tell because uh, professor basu has covered almost all the slides that i was planning to tell it was quite so quite obvious but i am from jagadish Kosh national science talent search um this was, uh, I, would, I would like to share, uh, just just give me one minute to share a slide, only a few slides. Just one minute, please. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm, scrolling. Is it yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Fine. So, uh, I would I would like to say only very few words because Professor Basu has already covered all the work that uh, Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bosch has uh, done. All. Uh, J.C. Bosch Institute, Jagadish Bosch National Science Talent Search. It's an, now it's an autonomous institute under the Department of Higher Education Government of West Bengal. And uh, this institute was established to commemorate the birth centenary for Sir J.C. Bosch, the first science talent search organization of the India. And since 1958, to commemorate the birth centenary of uh, J.C. Bosch, on 30th November 1958, Jagadish Bosch National Science Talent Search was formed by some of the visionaries at, at that time, Jawaharlal Nehru, um, uh, Sir D.M. Bose, and um, Dr. Bidhan Chandra Rai, Rai were the um, visionaries who decided to form such an institute who will carry forward the legacy and the philosophy of Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bosch and building the nation by building scientists through nurturing and selection. So JVNSCS or Jagadish Bosch National Science Talent Search is working for the last 65 years almost. And um, we, what I, I'd like to certainly mention that what we do, uh, we provide, we, we select uh, different students from across the West Bengal. In 1958, when the institute was started, we were 
selecting the students from the undergraduate levels with a philosophy that uh, these students will be from basic science, engineering and medicine and uh, the best scientists of the society from our nation and across the world will nurture these young budding scientists to encourage and to build the nation who will work in the future. So since then, JBNSCS have been selecting uh, young talented students of science from the undergraduate levels and they nurture them till their completion of their undergraduate studies and master studies and sometimes PhD studies as well. And uh, since last six years, we have been started working with the selection of the students from the high school level as well because what we have seen that uh, um, uh, Professor Basu has already mentioned that interdisciplinary approach of learning science is very rare in our country. And uh, it is also true that uh, unless you do science by your own, it, it is very difficult to understand and contribute something very interesting in science. As uh, uh, Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bosch was also a very renowned worker in science who used to make his own instruments for his own research. That's the biggest capability and creativity of Sir Jagadish Chandra Bosch that he usually at that time not much instruments were available at least in India and the transformational research from theory into practice was very difficult and as a result um, uh, all of us now know that uh, several small small instruments with a very fundamental thought and very minimum um, uh, materials he used to make like crystal rub and all those small instruments. Uh, so what we do is uh, we have realized that when we see the undergraduate students of, of science and uh, what we encourage that students should carry out their research from the very early uh, career uh, of their studies. And what we have observed that if an undergraduate student want to pursue their research at the beginning in the first year, they are not much, <clears throat> they do not get encouragement from the college or university where they study. And with this, what we have seen, the most interesting and the curious mind starts from the school days. When a student is in class 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they are really genius. They are really genius and if we can encourage them and allow them and give them the scope to carry out research, we believe that they will do wonderful things in future. So we have started selecting students in the high school levels after class 11. We call them as a JBNSJS junior scholars and those whom we start selecting at the uh, undergraduate level, we call them JBNSJS senior scholars. So what we do, we select them through written test and then we ask them to perform their creativity. We check them with a test and JBNSS is the only institute at that time, even now as far our knowledge is concerned, that we conduct an open book creativity test because we believe creativity is the key thing through which a young budding scientist can achieve wonderful goals in the future. So we take the creativity by giving them uh, open-ended problems during the test at the time of their selection. And believe me, many a times Professor Basu has also been with us during the selection board. And these first year undergraduate students are very well capable of any young scientist with their minds, their creativity, their activities and all. So another thing I'd like to mention here that what we do is we 
essentially started for the last five years that what we have seen that we do not find lot much girls in the science if i ask you that name 10 most successful women scientists we need to think twice across india or across across uh, world because we have observed girls are not much into science and we have started realizing this and to encourage our young girls we have started Bigani Konna Medhavitti Awards since last five years and interestingly what we have observed that lot much of girl is coming into science and maybe in next five ten years we'll have some very young budding girl or women scientists and uh, our uh, mentor uh, that's a higher education government of west bengal and uh, uh, this bigani konna medhavitti was essentially named by our honorable chief minister miss momota bandopatha and we are very successfully selecting girl students 50 number of girl students every year and uh, this is what uh, i would like to share about jbnsts apart from these all selections we have different other activities and most interestingly we have a very nice laboratory for the students for the young scientists what we call the young scientists for their work at our center in koshba 1300 Rajdanga main road and if anybody, any young students are interested, can visit our website jbnsts.ac.in and can write to us for working here. We have a very wonderful biotechnology laboratory, material science laboratory, physical science laboratory, and many students used to work here and they do wonderful things, publish papers and get the scholarships for their higher studies abroad. With this, I would like to uh, thank you all for providing me this platform for sharing our institutional activities. And uh, certainly, it's a tribute to uh, Sri, uh, Sir Jagadish Chandra Bosch uh, on his birthday, the 30th November. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us your valuable time and uh, valuable uh, information on, uh, on, 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 on this field. Uh, so, on the, next, uh, on the next, we will uh, take up our next speaker, uh, Dr. Manas Kudin Das from All India Radio. Uh, sir, please uh, take the microphone and start with your uh, uh, speech. Dr. Manas Kudim Das, uh, if you can hear me, please uh, take up the microphone. Uh, am I audible? Am I yes, audible? sir, absolutely. Fine, sir, fine, sir. Sir, there must be some uh, network issue. Now, uh, good evening to all the members of the West Bengal Club. And good evening to honorable speakers. Dr. Abhiji Scott, in one way or the other, handicapped by network issues. Can you hear me now? Or it's the same? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. I mean, 
there will be ups and downs uh, to uh, everyone's speech. I mean, in the, in the in the last two. Okay. Uh, since there is not much time, and uh, we are in the process of paying our homage to Jagadish Chandra Bose. Uh, let me tell you first that the life of J.C. Bose can be analyzed from <laughs> Professor Gautam Bwasu has been uh, visiting places, institutions, talking to children, talking to grown-ups, explaining the life in his very own way and I remember very well at the IICB uh, he had focused on Amor Chitrapatha that I believe he was using the same slides to Begotanda, am I wrong? All right. Yes, some are used. Yeah, some, yeah. Are. some have been used. So, the way he speaks, the knowledge he has in his command, I thought he should be given the full time and Abhijit also can supplement that. But somehow I found myself in the list of speakers. So, uh, I must uh, uh, take this opportunity to pay my homage to J.C. Bose. In fact, what J.C. Bose did, apart from his uh, inventions, both discoveries and inventions, what are the inventions? The inventions are the instruments that he prepared in order to take ahead his uh, research, and in this process, he recruited some artisans from the Raza Bazar area, which I, I believe, before J.C. Bose didn't believe that they can come up with very fine instruments. But if you now visit the museum of uh, the Bose Institute, the Raza Bazar campus, you will find the instruments prepared by uh, J.C. Bose in case in uh, glass uh, and uh, those are on display and you can have a look and if there is someone who uh, is available to explain the difficulties of those instruments, the finer point uh, of those instruments, you will be uh, astonished to know how minute record can, I mean how minute uh, how minutely parameters can be recorded through those instruments. And think of the time when he was doing these, these experiments. That was the turn of the, turn of the century. Uh, uh, that was late, uh, late 19th century. So he actually ushered in a culture of science and engineering both. It's not only science per se, it was engineering also because without that, he wouldn't have been able to give us what he actually gave. Now, uh, two of his very trusted soldiers were referred to as Ashu Binoy, Ashutosh and Binoy. You might have heard about them, you might have also read about them. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Bongiyo Vijayan uh brought out uh, several articles in their, uh, in their um, periodical called uh, so, you uh, might have uh, seen that. Now, the point is that Ashu Binoy was also very active in ensuring that the instruments that Jagadish Chandra Bose wanted were made as per order and really did fit with the experimental setup. So, that was an engineering. Uh, not and, I mean a uh, number of instruments uh, came out from the Rabazar area. And that was some engineering marvel which we can still be proud of. Now another thing, when I say that he uh, gave us a scientific culture, uh, what I mean is, at the Bose Institute, after it was established on uh, his birthday, 30th of November 1917, he started giving lectures, regular lectures. And in order to attend the lectures, 
you, uh, if you are uh, alive at the time, you would have to purchase tickets. Why tickets? Why not free? Because the Yahudi Shandar Bose believes that everything cannot be for everyone. I mean, there should be people who are really interested. So don't give it free. But keep the tickets at a minimum price and make it, I mean, the price should not be prohibited. But the next year that is gay and those uh, occasions was just not only simple, the explanation was very deep, yet understandable. And that culture is still carried on in different parts of the whole of the country. So that is what I uh, refer to as scientific culture. Because see, scientists working in laboratories, doing their own bit, trying to uh, contribute valuable, meaningful data to the process of scientific research is okay. That is, of course, the primary condition of uh, scientific research. You have to do this. You have to go th through the path of rigor. You have to uh, take records. You have to carefully analyze that and come up with some uh, information that uh, would uh, actually support the process of scientific research. Okay. But apart from that, there is a larger society which is eager to know what science is doing, what the scientists are doing behind those high walls in those uh, institutions. Now, if you avoid them on a regular basis, they will uh, develop a deep suspicion and sometimes indifference towards the scientific establishment. Yogamish Chandra Bose didn't want that to happen. And that is why he started those lectures and not only that, as uh, Gautamda has rightly pointed out, he, uh, uh, I've uh, defined on this point, he was not the first to write uh, science fiction in Bangla, there was someone else. But the science fiction that he wrote was a very, of a very representative kind. And a great deal of fiction, a little bit of science, that won't actually uh, confuse you, would actually encourage you to read more such stories. And let me tell you something, Professor Shonku, a character created by Satyajit Ray, this character was based on the uh, life and uh, the role played by Jagadish Chandra Bose. Remember, Jagadish Chandra Bose used to live in Giridhi. He spent his last days in Giridhi. Satyajit Ray, his family, had uh, some place to dwell uh, over there. And they also uh, used to go there. And Satyajit Ray uh, himself uh, said that Professor Songku takes a lot of things from what Jagadish Chandra Bose did. So you find uh, Professor Songku setting up his laboratory not in Kolkata, not in Bombay, not in Chennai, not in Delhi, but in Giridhi, a place far removed from the humdrum of the city. So Jagadish Chandra Bose actually inspired the character of Professor Shonku. So this is something, I mean, uh, see, Dr. Chandra Bose, when he taught uh, at uh, the Presidency College, he, along with uh, Atajya Sakula Chandra Rai, created a batch of students which made us proud in later years. Because from them, the baton has passed to, I mean, from J.C. Bose and Prasula Chandra Ray, the baton has passed on to the hands of Satyendra Bose, Negna Saha, Gain Chandra Bose, Ganendra Kukupadhyay, and, and others who were batchmates. And after that, a few uh, bright students also came up. So, if you want to dwell on uh, the teacher of Jagadish Chandra Bose, you can go at length speaking about the students, the bright students, their contributions, etc. As a researcher, he, as Rotunda has rightly pointed out, he was the first to show us the path of scientific research. He was the first modern scientist of the country. We know, I mean, see, we know uh, Radhana Sikgar could be uh, uh, given the credit. Uh, we know the debate can be there for, over whether Prabhupada both can be given the credit. But, Jagadish Chandra Bose did science in a methodical way. He 
understood what should be done in order to tell the world that the Indians can do science in a far better way than is believed by the British or the other Europeans. So he was the first to uh, set us on the path of scientific research, giving full credit to Kamutana Bose and Ratana Sikha both. But the, I would set these apart, I would rather focus on the scientific culture he created through inventions, through making uh, instruments, through uh, those lectures. I don't know whether they, those were weekly or uh, monthly lectures. Anyway, uh, the periodicity I, I'm not sure about. So these are the things that Jogadhi Pushu uh, gave us. And also the science fiction thing, which uh, inspired the Sotajit uh, Ray and others as well. So these are the contributions that Jogadhi from the board that needs to be taken into account when we pay homage uh, to this great figure, this uh, uh, a maker of modern scientific India. And of course, what both of them said, I am, full, I am in full agreement with that. We kill the past. We actually kill the scientific spirit, the inquisitiveness of the child at the very beginning with the huge load of syllabus and most unscientific sort of syllabus that is added over to them. And they are used to mug up everything and vomit it at the exam hall and bring that uh, very good mark sheet for their parents to be proud about. But as we know, but as we have learned uh, in this lecture as well, that Jagadish uh, Chandra was given a free time. He was given liberty to roam around uh, through the pastures of the countryside, mingle with the people who knew how to create an instrument. An instrument doesn't always mean a large hadron collider. An instrument could mean a simple fishing net that could be made more effective for catching fish. A simple tool could mean an agricultural utensil that can dig the soil that can plough the soil in a bitter way, even without an engine, without a motor. So these he used to uh, see when he uh, roamed the uh, countryside, and Bhagavan uh, Chandra Basu gave him an actual liberty. So this is a childhood that could also be uh, given to our children. And without that, I fully agree, there cannot be any scientist of any uh, useful value. I mean, the word useful value is very debatable. Uh, anyway, but what I am trying to say, let us remember the J.C. Bose's contribution in this life, not only his work on uh, electromagnetic waves, not only his work on the response of plants, not only his work associated with uh, the animate and the inanimate, which uh, falls sort of in the gray area, uh, and uh, many other scientists in the Western world they stop at those ideas, but we still do not know whether that was uh, unfounded or that still deserves the attention these days. So with those words, uh, I didn't have a speech ready with me. Uh, as I thought, I mean, as I said, uh, that uh, I would be safely in the audience and listen to what uh, Dr. Ovisi Kaur and Dr. Gautam Basu had to say. But, uh, but still, I have given them, I have been given the opportunity to speak. I pay my homage to uh, Sir J.C. Bose, the great leader, the great creator, the great philosopher, and of course the great scientist. And I of course appreciate the uh, initiatives of West Bengal Amateur Radio Club, who, who are uh, doing a human job, those who know, those who read the stories that come out regularly in the newspapers, about their achievement, uh, they will appreciate, they will uh, support me when I'm saying. And uh, I also appreciate uh, their work, and with those words, I bring my uh, presentation to a close. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manas Pratim Das, for giving us this uh, wonderful <clears throat> uh, insight on uh, Dr. Sir J.C. Bose, Acharya J.C. Bose, Dr. J.C. Bose, we can call him many names as we want. Uh, so, 
Uh, with this, uh, uh, it, that brings to, uh, to us to our end of the session. Now I'll uh, hand over this session to uh, view to Juliet Fox Alpha, Marish Nandishwas, uh, for the closing uh, closing words. Uh, uh, JFA, can you please pick up the um, audio and uh, close this session over? Thank you, uh, Arunabo, for excellent uh, this webinar. Thank you, Dr. Manasputin Das, sir, uh, Professor Gautam, but, uh, Gautam, sir.